based on my impression from Botswana, you know, I've read stories about it, seen photos, and, and then from my own experience seven years ago, we had to cross some rivers with the truck in a few spots, but we never walked through any water at all except when we went to recover a lechway that I had shot. There was nothing like this, these flood stages that we're going through here, the way the water comes up in the flood plains. We've had to wade through up to our knees or even above our knees a couple of times. I started to lose the clutch there and, and then I thought, oh, John, what do you think of that? The exhaust smoke or the smoke from the heat and the splash, uh, that was a real spectacle to watch that. It, it's really a testament to uh, the kind of trucks that they run here. The quest today is for Cape Buffalo and to find these huge wild cattle, perhaps the most dangerous of the African Big Five, the hunters need to get on dry ground and search for fresh tracks. A hunter with nearly 40 years of professional experience tracking buffalo is Rand Safari's Cecil Riggs. Basically buffalo hunting, you will see a herd, you try and stalk the herd, stay out of sight and get in as close as possible. You've got to get as close as you can so your person that's actually doing the shooting is going to put the shot in a good spot. That's a nice buffalo. Yeah, he's bloody wide. Got a good drop. I haven't had a good look at these bosses yet. But a lot of times you have to keep looping the wind because they're going downwind. Stay out of sight keep your, and keep the party that's tracking down to a minimum. It's a bull there. Beautiful. You see him? Beautiful. They've seen us. Go back around when you get around this wind. We go back to the boat. Yeah. So here we are this morning, our first encounter with the, the four bulls. That didn't work out, but Cecil said, you know, let's get back in the boat, let's move on, we'll find some more. This wind is pretty tricky. And as as we moved in that they got our wind and moved out. But that other herd is over there. We're gonna go wide around and make sure that the wind is right and then come out and have them. And that's exactly what we did. And we came quite a long way from where we, we had seen those that first group. We probably spent uh, an hour and a half on the water. That's a pygmy goose. This is some of the, the cleanest natural water in the world. I heard you saying that, that, that you guys always just use this for your camp water when you were right out of this. They say if you drink from the waters of the Okavango, you will return. Yeah. And then Cecil saw a buffalo down here by the water. We could just see the top of his back, really. It was a pretty amazing spot that he made. I understand that uh, he had a little discussion with uh, Johnson, the tracker, whether it was really a buffalo or not. He's got a single, single ball on his own. We don't know what his head looks like yet. This was just the perfect setup. We had the wind in the right direction. We had the right cover. We moved into within probably 50 yards of his position as he fed on the, on the grass uh, above the surface. We started our stalk and we went inland into the cover. It was pretty heavy cover. We kept going just very cautiously and slowly until we cut his track. And we were real quiet, real painstaking to not make any noise. We knew he would be close. Be in the open. We went in a direction where we expected him to emerge from the heavy cover, and we sat up there uh, and waited for him for, uh, I don't know, 15 minutes, 20 minutes maybe. Ah, what a shame. He just wasn't the bull we wanted. Problem is, every time you want to shoot a buffalo, there's all these cows and bulls on the outside that you have to get through to get to the good down. guy in the middle. Get down, he's always in the middle. It's Murphy's law. <laughs> Murphy's not a very nice Irishman. So when he moved back into the bush, joined the herd, the herd started moving off. This perfect position that we were in suddenly became useless and we had to get up and regroup and again dodging the wind and keeping cover to our advantage. We, we stayed with the herd, but as they moved out into more open country, it became more difficult to stay concealed. So we had to had to give that one up. And go way around to there somewhere, then walk into that, that. That's quite a big long island that there. Yeah. Get in there. 
go down there and get that side because this yeah. wind's changed on us again. Hunting Cape Buffalo can mean hours of following a herd or perhaps just a single set of hoof prints. The sun can travel from one rim of the sky to the other. And the only sign that the buffalo have been there or lie ahead are the old beds they've left behind. The size and location of such beds can remind a hunter of how little cover it takes to hide a nearly one ton horned animal. There are times and places in which it is almost preferable not to catch a buffalo. At one point, one of the animals at the back of the herd spotted us. And boy, once one spots you, everybody's got to be absolutely still. And of course, on top of that, if the wind swirls and they happen to get a whiff, well, then the game's over. Do you see that bull? This wind is fucking us around completely. Eventually, this uh, herd broke and ran, and the next bit of uh, water that they crossed was too deep for us. So that pretty much wound it up for that particular herd. It was a shame because we were hoping to, uh, you know, get up to within a, you know, reasonable distance of one of these bulls that we had spotted. But that's also buffalo hunting. Just I think probably as late as it is now, we got a, we still got a bit of a boat ride. Yeah. That was, that was buffalo hunting as exciting as it gets oh, yeah. without actually pulling the trigger. That's for sure. <laughs> we'll be fine, him. Even if he's looking at you, stick it down low into the brisket. He's angling away, try and get it in here. Come out on that shoulder. That's what you need to do. And keep shooting. Shoot, reload, and load and shoot, load and shoot. In the last three days of hunting, we've spent more of our time with buffalo in sight, 50, 60 yards sometimes, with the whole herd milling around, than without buffalo. If you don't think that that's a mega dose of adrenaline, then you need to come here and try it for yourself. What about this one coming out now? Not as if he has a boss, but he's wide. So we had discussed the plan and all agreed that we wanted to be as close as we could get so that John could be absolutely comfortable with taking that first shot. And all of a sudden, Johnson had seen something. There's one lying down there. Turned out it's the buffalo laying down in some heavy bush. To me, even in my binoculars at first, I couldn't see a buffalo there. I could just see sort of a black hump. But we decided to make a move toward this patch of heavy cover that was up ahead of us. And we just took it easy by easy. All of a sudden, Johnson stops. And I mean, it's obvious that he's seen the buffalo. And of course, immediately we set up. Uh, he got the sticks out. And I got my rifle up on there. At over three quarters of a ton, a Cape Buffalo is a big target, but never an easy one. It takes the proper angle and a 375 bullet or larger to penetrate the vital heart lung area of a bull's body and to bring it down. The brain shot can only be taken face on and only at the last second when a charging buffalo drops its head to strike with its boss or or horn tips. Can you see him? He's gonna stand up any minute. He's gonna stand up any minute. He's gonna stand up any minute. Now he's stand up, take him in the center of the chest. Just take him. Just take him. No, oh, well done. Reload, reload. Yeah, reload, 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 reload. Move forward, move forward. He's running and he's running back into the brush. Okay, we'll hold it. He's run back in that dead brush. We're gonna pull his tracks there. I was fairly confident, fairly comfortable that I had made a good shot, but you never know. Watch, 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 she's run into that stuff. John had that shot feel. Yeah, I think it was yeah. good. Huh? Yeah. And with Buffalo, until you walk up to him and he's down and you're ascertained that he's dead, you can never be comfortable at all. And when you've got one that you know you've hit and he's gone, then it's high drama time right there. Track is going to fetch the boat. To bring it around, we're going to cross and see if we can pick up his tracks on the other side and see if we can track him up. And uh, we might get another shot at him if we're lucky. We'll get a shot at him if we're lucky and we'll see what happens when we wait until the boat gets here. This is this would be over our head, wouldn't it? Yeah, this is the river right here we want to cross. Uh -huh. And uh, the boat will come around now and we'll go across and uh, have a look at see at him again. I'm sure we'll catch up with him again. After we waited a little bit, then we started to follow up. And I'll tell you, when you, uh, when you do that, 
You're real excited then. I put another round in the chamber. We're shooting solids. You want as much penetration and want as much tissue damage and shock as possible that you can put into that animal. She's bled you. Oh yeah. Bled on that palm leaf there. Yep. Buffalo is a very determined animal and he's not easy to put down, which is why he's dangerous. You don't stop a buffalo or turn a buffalo. You have to kill him. He gets that last message from his brain to his body, you know, go and kill, and that's what happens. You gotta break him, you gotta kill him. Easy does it, easy does it. As tight as your nerves might be when you're following him unwounded, when he's wounded or potentially wounded, you're really on edge. I mean, because you never know what a buffalo is gonna do if he's got any life in him at all. He presents a very real potential threat, real danger. You see him there? Yes. He's down, it's just, if you move, you shoot him. Cecil pulled me up right beside him. We advanced shoulder to shoulder with our guns ready. Cecil had me put another shot into him just to be sure. Put another one into his hump there. Right in between, just over the top of the horns and hit the horns. Okay, let's go forward, well done, well done. Thank you. Come round, come round, let's have a look. He's <laughs> done, he's done. Yeah. Wow. He's he's big, he's big. Big. Yeah, big old buffalo you got there. Ooh, boy. Look at there. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Yeah, he's done. He's not going anywhere. Thank you. Well done. Well done, John. Well done again. Excellent. Yep. Excellent. Yeah. Oh, man. Look at this. Cecil, look at it. It looks like he's been fighting and he's knocked. Yeah, he knocked his whole boss off on yeah. that side. Oh. <laughs> Never seen oh, anything like that. Couple. This guy This guy is a warrior, eh? When is that? Hit by a car. John, just try to lift his head up, just to give you an idea how heavy it is. There's the shot right there that did the damage. Is it just center punched? Dead center. You couldn't have done it if we tied him down, you couldn't have done it better. With that, and we all congratulated each other, shook hands, and we had a fine buffalo down, and uh, then the picture taking started. Cecil, why don't you get in there? I want to take a couple shots just so we can see how big the body on him. Get a little 